All right, it's uh, five past nine on this uh, Monday morning. I'm delighted to say it's a great pleasure to be joined in studio by the Liverpool legend, Bruce Grobler. Thank you very much indeed. Morning, Bruce. Me. Thanks a million for coming into us. You're here with, uh, you're at a lunch this afternoon in Harry's on the Green for a Champions League preview lunch and encouraging people to come down and say hello. I'm sure there'll be no shortage of takers. Listen, uh, uh, you know, since Harry's on the Green has been open, that's the only place that I usually go down to. Yeah, Fa right. Fabulous place to eat. Good. Are you in Dublin much? Uh, I have been, you know. Three, four years ago, I came over for the rugby. Three years ago, I came over for the rugby. Harry's just opened three years ago, so that's where we went, and I've never, never looked back. Good. You get but a good reception over here, I'm sure. Yeah. The Liverpool fans. Oh, you're, a bit, you're not. You're a bit lukewarm. Yeah, walking through the airport today. Here you show we are. <laughs> <laughs> Full on. People are pumped. Well, there were people on the plane that day, you know, wondering why I was coming to. Yeah, yeah Dublin you're going this not way. And not Kiev. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, not tempted to head over. No, uh, I've I've been asked to come over here. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's it's quite uh, it's it's an honour to come over to Ireland, especially when they don't want to uh, have uh, Ronnie Whelan here. <laughs> <laughs> we love Ronnie over here, Bruce. I, I you know. know, you see, but you see Robert the thing is they've, yours. they've asked for me. Yeah, so, yeah. Listen, get the main man in, you know. Yeah, and actually, I I had a uh, a trip going out to Kiev, but I'd already made my decision to come to Ireland, and I, and they came. On to too too late. Yeah, well, so look at we're happy no, to have you. The snooze, you lose. Yeah, and there we go. We're happy to have you. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's get straight into it. We don't have a huge amount of time. 1984. We wanted to discuss with you in the context, obviously, of uh, what's coming up this weekend. You've described it as the best moment of your career. It was it was a standout night. I mean, it, it had everything. And yeah, yeah, it certainly did. You know, we were stoned before we got into the uh, uh, stadium. <laughs> All the players. <laughs> Wow. The bus driver and the. <laughs> and the and, I'm, we're, and we're talking about being pelted by stone. Correct. Yes. Uh, no, none of the others. I could have gone either way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that set the precedent of the game. Right. And, and we took it as right. And the Roma were favourites on the night. Yeah, we, 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 we were going into the Lions Den. Mm. It was like, uh, you know, those gladiators that are going to the Coliseum. Yeah. They've got a, they are hiding to nothing. And, mm. and, uh, and if they do win, they either get the thumbs up or the thumbs down. So we went in there and uh, we have managed to come away with a, a victory. And Liverpool had had such an impressive record in European finals up to that point, played three, won three. Does that in some ways increase the pressure or does it take it off a little bit? Or Did that feed into the night at all? Well, because of what happened when we initially went into the stadium, that really fired us up. Did it? And then in the tunnel when we were coming out, with the, you know, coming onto the field, the Roma people never never came out of their dressing room, so we started to sing, singing a song, you know, with with for Chris Rea. Chris Rea song. Yeah. yeah, I don't know what it is, but I love it, and so we were all warming up to this. And uh, as soon as they came out of the dressing room, soon they said, "Carry on singing and just look them in the eye." So you can imagine these Italians when they came out of there, and we were saying, "I don't know what it is, but I love it." Hey, I don't know what it is, but I love. It. <laughs> they must have thought, "Hey, I, <laughs> these these boys are they they crazy, they're not crazy." <laughs> Yeah. They, they must have, like, they must be really scared then when it gets down to a penalty shootout because they're like, look how relaxed those people were before the game. Well, I, I don't know if that uh, had anything to do with it, but when when we came down to the shootout, we looked over to the Roma side and they were all lying on their floor on the floor with their masseuse on their legs and you know rubbing, and all all of us were standing around having a chat and yeah. and with uh, Joe Fagan telling us, you know, uh, what to do and, and how to do it. But it never worked out well how Joe Fagan wanted it because Stevie Nichol got it's into the... the first penalty. Well, he, he took the ball because uh, uh, Phil Neal was tying his bootlaces. Right. So he ran into the box and Phil, uh, Phil Neal said, excuse me, it should be me. And he just took a puff of his cigarette. Uh, let's run with it. And that was it. Wow. And he put the ball over the bar. And I got past him. I said, thanks for that. And he told me, yeah, fly away and do your own job. Yeah. It wasn't fly away, you know. Because yeah. so, the, the commentator in the in the in the clip when you're uh, when he's walking back, it goes, "Oh, and Bruce Grabler's walking towards Steve Nichol now." You know, and the assumption is there's going to be some words of encouragement here, but like you don't you don't hear what's I, said. I, I, you I just, just said, slide past said, each other. Thanks for that. And he said, "Fly away and do your own job." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and Joe Fagan has a word with you as well at that well, point. Well, Joe Fagan had his arm around me, and I couldn't, you know, I didn't have to look up. I could smell the cigarettes. Right. And he just said, "Listen, myself and the coaches and the, the chairman and the directors and you know the captain and the team, 
And I'm thinking, where is he going with this? And he said, and, and the wives and the girlfriends and the 10,000 fans that came, I'm not, I'm not going to blame you. Uh, oh, jeez, what is he talking about blaming for? Yeah, yeah. If he can't uh, stop a ball from 12 yards. Mm. And I went, oh, okay, thanks. I said, thanks for that. And he says, but try and put them off. Right. And I only put off the two players that I thought might have the bottle to, to actually, you know, okay, I'll see how, how this goes against an international. Mm. So the first one was Bruno Conti. And I put my hands on my knees and crossed them over with my hands in a 60s dance. Mm. And he shot the ball over the bar and I thought, oh yeah, might work. Then Graziani putting his arm around the referee, which I didn't like, and ran into the back of the net, bit the net. Went to the other side, bit the net. He crossed himself and I came in like a, like I did. Do you watch, ever watch it back? I watch it back, yeah, but, and I, you know, I can still do exactly the same move, but because it was one of those things in the, in the letter of the law, I couldn't move my feet until the ball was kicked. Mm. So both times I never, my feet were firmly on the ground and I just did that. And then this way I was, you know, sp spaghetti legs, feet was planted and he just skied it. skied it over the top of the, well, he clipped the bar and went over. Do you think you were directly responsible for the two lads missing? Uh, well, I, I certainly got into their brain. That's, that's into their head. Uh, they, they couldn't hit the, hit the target. They were worrying about me too much. So I, I certainly got them, you know, in, into their heads for mm. sure. Have you spoken to Graziani since then? Well, Graziani asked me to, on the semi-final, um, semi-final to go to Rome. And because I'd already been, I already seen the game at uh, Liverpool, and which we we thumped them. So he asked a, a, a reporter, "Tell Bruce Grobler I'd like to emulate, do the penalty shootout." So we beat the um, Roma in Rome, and we hammered them in Rome. So on the second leg, when it, which is back at uh, Anfield, he asked me to go over to Rome because he wants to take a penalty, you know, re redo that penalty, because now I, I think I can score. <laughs> so I said to him, no, well, you've got two days. You write to Liverpool Football Club, and I came to you last time, so you must come to me this time, and we'll do it at half time on the pitch where, when we play Roma wow. at, at Anfield. And he declined, so bad luck. The mind game's... Uh, the mind game's still... If he doesn't... He didn't want to travel to Liverpool to do it in the middle of the... In, in the at half-time. Liverpool and UEFA would have agreed for sure. Mm. But because he didn't come, he lost the opportunity. Th that initial invitation suggests that Graziani still thinks about this quite a bit and yes. still thinks you are responsible for him missing that penalty. Correct, and he's going to miss again. <laughs> <laughs> was he doing it as part of a TV stunt or was this just... I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. He asked me and I, and I said, I'm not coming over there when the game is going to be played in Liverpool. Mm. You come to Liverpool and we'll do it at half time. Never heard anything more, sir. So. Uh, we should set that up. Only when Liverpool play Roma. Right. In Liverpool. <laughs> So if there's a next time, who knows? You know what to who do. Knows? Yeah, we'll be on it. You'll be on it. There we go. You um, played well, under under. We were just saying before you came in. You played under essentially seventy five percent of Liverpool's most sort of legendary managers at all time. It was such an unbelievably interesting time at the club. And Paisley was the player that that uh, signed you, and he had seen you maybe a year or eighteen months playing in Division Four, I think. And he he had what I read was that he had seen you in the warm up, and turned to one of his coaches and went. I don't know, let's go, I don't need to see the game, we're going to sign that guy. Is that right? Well, that's, that's the, that is the story. Because I was told by Crew Alexander manager, the Tony Waddington, he said, oh, this is the last game of the season, 3rd of May 1980, playing against New York City at home, Cresty Road. And he came to me before the game, because he was a manager like that. He told all the players, excuse me, there's a team watching you today, mm. please, you know. So he said to me, oh, well, there's two very important people coming to watch it today. Tom Saunders and Bob Paisley from Liverpool. Please don't do something stupid. <laughs> <laughs> they were asking the wrong man. <laughs> no, well. So I did my warm-up and, and 
I, I, did, I did run out with an umbrella because it was raining. Right. <laughs> for the warm ups. So okay. Yeah. Just so they knew who you were, that was. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, I, well, I, I didn't want to get wet. <laughs> <laughs> so, I went into the, the box with my, my umbrella and then I did my warm ups. And so, yeah. he came, uh, when I ran in, the, the manager was shaking his head like this. And, you know, I said, What's the matter? He says, What's the matter? I thought I told you not to do something stupid. I said, why? He says, well, you know those two people that came to watch you play? I said, what do you mean came? Aren't they here? He says, no, they've gone to see Stoke City play Port Vale. <laughs> and it took them a while to, to snare you after that? Well, well they, they had to. Yeah. It took them a while because they thought I was a crew player. And crew told them that I'm a Vancouver mm. player. So they had to come out to Vancouver. Mm. And they only asked me one question. Do you want to play for Liverpool? I said, yes. And then they said, okay, Tom, let's go. And they walked out the door again. Yeah. Never saw them for again for for another six weeks, and oh, then right. six weeks later, manager comes to me and says, "Oh, uh, I've just sold you to uh, to Liverpool for two hundred and fifty thousand pounds. Here's your ticket. You're going tonight." Wow, <laughs> that was it. And you pretty much straight into the first team. Well, not no. Um, I got I got you in March. I played three games for the reserves all away from home, Everton away, Bolton Wanderers away, and uh, Leeds United away. Uh, let in one goal and uh, two wins and a draw. Right. Yeah. Pretty, pretty good start. Um, there was so much more we wanted to talk to you about. We want to get, before we wrap up, want to get your prediction, obviously, of the game tomorrow, how you think it's, uh, it's going to go, like it's, everybody's expecting goals. Yes, uh, both teams are very formidable in the attacking uh, situation. Um, I think that we've got the the quickest counter-attacking uh, forwards out of the the Premiership. Mm. You know, Salah, um, Firmino, and Mane are just lightning quick. It'd be incredible to be training with them uh, on a regular basis, wouldn't it? Oh, it, it would be. And with um, Van Dijk at the back, holding foot. You have a look at the uh, the goalkeeping situation, Carrius. Carrius will be, come the best and best money goalkeeper buy in the Premiership in the future. He, he costs four million from men's. He is going to be immense in the game, because I tell you what, he is. Uh, he's come on leaps and bounds since um, Van Dijk has been there. Yeah. I predict that they they are going to be goals, and I'm I'm going to say that. We, we will score, no doubt about it. Yeah. But it's how many we concede, and I'm going to go for 3-1. To Liverpool, obviously. To Liverpool, yeah, yeah. Very good. All right. Well, I'm sure there's a lot of Liverpool fans uh, who are watching in who will be pretty pleased with that. Uh, Bruce, pleasure chatting to you. Thanks, nice William. Wish we had you. another half hour, but that's, uh, that's got to wrap it. Thanks, William, for coming into us. You're Thank you very be, much uh, indeed. And uh, listen, everybody out there must go down there. Harry's on the Harry's green. Harry's on the green. This lunchtime, Champions League preview, Bruce Grobler is going to be there doing just that. So listen, enjoy it. Thanks, William, for coming into us.